Hello and welcome, boys and girls. My name is Dominic. I'm from Austria and this is my second tutorial I will be doing. Um, I explained already a technique um, that is also used in Paul Clement's uh, famous headphone spot for Ministry of Sound. Um, if you want to take a look at my Rage tutorial, you can find it on VMO on my channel as well. Um, this is an uh, explanation for the Paul Clemens um, close animation on the headphone spot. So let's have a look at it. Um, you can see it right here. The close pops out and then gets back into place. So uh, here we go. And I will explain the technique to you so it will not really uh, look exactly the same like uh, Paul Clemens uh, headphone close. But um, I will explain the technique to you. So let's jump into Cinema 4D. Uh, let's create a cylinder. And uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, let's make the radius a little bit bigger. And let's make the height a little bit smaller. Maybe something like that. Yeah, this is okay. 8 centimeters radius, maybe 100. Okay, this looks okay. Uh, rotation segments, maybe 250. Okay, here we go. Let's hit C on your keyboard. Oh, no. Let's get a step back. Sorry, my fault. Go to Caps. Uh, uncheck the Caps. And now let's make it editable. Go into Poly Mode. Control A on your keyboard to select all polys. Um, right click, Extrude. And let's extrude it a little bit. Uh, make sure that you have. Uh, selected the create caps right here okay uh, let's go back into model mode let's uh, select the rotation tool uh, hold down the shift key while you're rotating so snapping is enabled and let's rotate it for 90 degrees okay this looks great um, what we can do now we want to create a sphere so let's create a sphere um, here we go uh, the type to hemisphere and let's rotate it for 90 degrees hold on the shift key so enable snapping um, and let's increase the segments to maybe 60 okay this looks okay to me and now let's move it a little bit backwards and increase the radius to maybe something like no, let's increase the radius a little bit more, maybe to something like that, 130 maybe. Okay, and now let's move it backwards. Okay, may radius maybe a little bit more, maybe 140. Okay, let's move it backward. Okay, this looks perfect, 140. Um, and let's try to, to line up uh, the sphere with the top, like you can see it here, with uh, one line of the sphere uh, with the top. Okay, this looks perfect because we will fake um, the clothes, we will look like it's connected to the top. You can connect it to the top if you want to, uh, probably with a, a close belt tag or something like that. Uh, I will just fake it so it looks like it's, it's connected. But it doesn't really matter uh, for this tutorial, you get the idea anyway. So um, uh, let's click on, on C, make it editable the sphere, go to poly mode. Um, Select loop selection and let's um, select the polygons here. Uh, here on the sphere, okay. Now delete it. We will be deleting those, okay. This looks perfect. Uh, okay, what we want to do next is add a close tag uh, to the sphere. So let's go right click on the sphere. Uh, simulation tag clause. Let's go into point mode and as you can see we have a lot of unused points right here. So let's make a right click and go to optimize and this will get uh, get rid of all the unused points. Uh, let's go to select loop selection and select the points right here first ones on the sphere. Uh, go into the close tag into dresser and go to fix points and click on set. Okay, and if you play the animation now, it should already work, as you can see. 
Okay, this doesn't look too great, so let's go to simulate uh, close, close nerves and put the sphere under the close nerves. And as you can see, we have more polygons now. It looks a little bit greater. Uh, we can increase the subdivisions to maybe two, so keep it really high poly if you want to, because this is just an example. So it doesn't really matter if you go high poly or low poly or whatever. So um, let's go into the close tag again and let's go to forces. Let's change the gravity to maybe two. Change the gravity to two. The wind direction to minus two. Wind strength to four. And the turbulence to maybe one. And let's have a look at it. Let's play the animation again. And here we go, as you can see, this looks absolutely okay. Um, okay, and here is the fun part. Now we want to morph the whole thing back to the initial state. So it looks at frame 90, maybe something like, like at frame null. And if you keep playing with the forces settings and uh, you change the wind direction and you change the gravity to null and the strength to null and everything to null, you will see that it doesn't really work if we do that. We can try it out. So let's uh, make uh, a keyframe here for the gravity, for the wind direction, for the strength, for the wind drag for the wind impact, for the wind lift, and for the air resistance, and for the turbulence, and for the speed. And if we go to frame 90, or maybe let's say frame 60, and we changed everything to null, the gravity, the wind direction, the wind strength, turbulence, speed, and so on, and so on. And we keep uh, a keyframe right here. As you can see, it doesn't really move back into place because why should it? Uh, we just disabled everything. So just wanted you to show it doesn't matter how 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 much you play with those settings, you will probably not get it into place. So let's get rid of those keyframes. Um, could just delete it, but let's go back. Okay, and let's see it. Okay, that was a little bit too much. Uh, Okay, here we go. Now it should work again. Okay, so here is the fun part. Um, we will take, we will rename this to maybe uh, A clause, and this will be the A sphere, and this will be the A top. And now we'll select everything uh, by holding down the shift and the left mouse click, and then go to objects, group objects. Let's rename the null to A. And now, by holding down the control key and left mouse click, we duplicate this. And we will rename the duplication to B. And also rename the clause to B clause. And uh, B sphere and B top. Um, I'm just changing this, uh, th this for you, so you... Um, yeah. Uh, have okay. I don't know the word in English right now. So you have a better okay. You have a better idea of what I'm doing. So what we do, ne do next is we go to the A uh, class, to the A sphere, and we will uh, add a tag. And this tag is really important. And we go to character tags, and then add a pose morph tag. Okay. So here we go, and we will uh, click on points on the mixing we click on points and now it changes automatically into the tag uh, mode on the post morph and under advanced you have target and as target we will select the B sphere so the B sphere will be our target okay and this is it almost what we will do now is um, we will uh, uh, make the B duplication uh, invisible to the render and so let's click on this little points here so now it's invisible and as you can see nothing has changed so far so let's go to animate uh, let's go into the, the, the post morph tag on the tag and let's change the mode from edit to animate 
And here we have a little slider, it's the strength. And this slider is really powerful. Uh, we will set the keyframe on maybe frame O to 100, strength 100. Then keep the strength at 100 maybe, till, I don't know, frame, let's see, frame 50, or no, maybe let's see frame 60. And make another keyframe here. And then at frame 90, we wanna change the strength to 0%. And if you play the animation now, uh, uh, here we go. And this is it. This was the whole animation. Um, well maybe let me increase the frames here to maybe 100, maybe 300. Doesn't really matter. Okay, and let's have a look at, at the animation again. And as you can see, it morphs back into into its initial state and this is probably how Paul Clements uh, used to uh, do his animation for the for the headphone clause so I hope I hope you found this tutorial useful you can play around a lot with the with the close settings and uh, you can uh, you can play around, you can set a lot of keyframes so when it morphs back into, into its final position uh, it doesn't look so so static so it looks a little bit more turbulent or anything else you can also uh, change the polygons uh, right here and so it looks more like a, a headphone cloth or something like that so there's a lot of things you can do and a lot of things you can play around with so I hope you found this tutorial useful and you can also check out my Rage tutorial on my VMO channel that will also explain uh, some techniques Paul Clements probably used in, in his video and um, you can also check out my webpage at uh, www.cursestudio.com uh, uh, um, I will, I will uh, post the link under the video uh, on, the, on my VMO channel and you can also you will find the rage tutorial there and there is also a donate button if you want to donate some money I wouldn't mind uh, I would love to to get some money for my tutorials but it's no no need that you spend money I'm, I'm sharing this with the community and uh, I hope you like it and if you like it simply click on the button uh, in the VMO uh, in the, on the VMO video and yeah this is it. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write me uh, anytime. And I will also share the source file with you. So I will uh, post the link um, so you can get the source file as well. And yeah, have a nice day and uh, see you next time. Bye.